Sunday morning worship service. We're glad you could be here um, for our 8.30 worship service. And I'd like to say um, happy Mother's Day. Um, it is Mother's Day and um, a time we celebrate um, um, our mothers and um, those who are happy other Mother's Day also. Those people who have fulfilled that role in varieties of ways in all of our lives. Um, um, who Not the ones who always gave birth to us, but um, were there for us in, in a variety of ways. Um, each and every Sunday morning, not each and every Sunday morning, when I wear the white stole that I'm wearing now, this Sunday morning, I wear a stole that was made by, by one of those women um, who stood in and has, over the course of the years, um, been a mother and a, and a, a, a grandmother for, for my children. Um, this was made by Sheila Ayla um, many years ago, and I still wear it. And she's still with us and still um, trying to, to, to be a mother for all of us, and we appreciate that. So celebrate, celebrate the women um, who have done great things um, um, for you and, and with you in your lives um, on this day. Also, um, we have, um, remember, we have lots of graduates who are still trying to get those names on the sign if you want to remember or um, uh, uh, celebrate one of our graduates for the class of 2020 from college or um, high school or graduate school. Um, please um, let us know those names. Um, we have um, bulletins that are in for the service to order of worship. Those are found online for 8.30, 9.30, and 11 on Sundays, and for the 12 o'clock noon service on Wednesdays, please check that, and please check your e-blast, which has all the other information, the announcement section of a bulletin, let's call it, that comes out um, regularly, keeping us up to date. If you're not on the e-blast, um, you can contact the church office, we'll get you on it immediately. Thank you very much. I think that covers all the announcements, um, let's say a prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day, for the opportunity to come before you in worship, to celebrate, to share, to hear once again your word. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn is hymn number 557. It is Blessed Be the Tide that Binds. <laughs> We have a role to play. Now, if I were to show you 
this bowl. It looks just like a regular bowl. It has some fancy painting on it, and you maybe could use it as a cup, or you could use it maybe to eat something out of or to store something. But this bowl has a special role, too. You see, this bowl is called a singing bowl. And when I take this mallet and I run it around the bowl, I don't know if you can hear that, but it actually is singing to us. And it gets louder as I keep going. This bowl has a special purpose, a purpose that it can only fulfill when it's reaching its full potential. You hear the ring now? It makes a beautiful sound, proclaiming the noise and the full purpose of what it is. As God's people, people that have a special crown that we are wearing, we are charged with going and telling people how God works in our lives. We are, in, even if we are little bitty, even if we are much older with lots of life experience, it doesn't matter where we are in life. Part of who God made us to be is people who share good news of Jesus. The people who go and love everyone really well. And so this week, in this unusual and weird season, I want you to think about a specific way, one way, that you can go and be reminded that your crown means you have the responsibility of sharing God's love with other people and figuring out one unique way to do that this week. Maybe it's writing a letter. Maybe it's giving an extra hug to your mom or the person who loves you like a mom today. Maybe it's helping with chores around the house or doing something a little bit special this week. Figure out how it is that you can be God's special person this week and have the confidence of the crown that you wear as the priesthood of all believers, what our text says, that lets you know that God is calling you to something special. Friends, will you pray with me this morning? Dear God, we are thankful that you give us a special goal, a special calling. Lord, help us to know ways that we can show how we love you more to make sure that we honor the crown that you give each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We um, return to the first letter of Peter, and again, through the, through the whole month of May, we will be in Peter. Uh, this is my fourth sermon on Peter. Um, do two sermons a week on each chapter, one on Wednesday and one for Sunday mornings. And so we turn to 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 10. Here now the reading of God's holy word. Come to him, that living stone, rejected by men, but in God's sight chosen and precious. And like living stones, be, yourself bit in, be, be yourselves built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, for it stands in Scripture. Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and he who believes in me will not be put to shame. To you, therefore, who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the very stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner, and a stone that will make men stumble, a rock that will make them fall. For they stumble because they disobey the word, and they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were no people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May God's blessing 
be upon us. And may God protect us from the enemy, constantly at work, trying to steal God's word from us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Growing up um, with, a, with a single mom, um, having to take care of almost all the duties of the household of, of father and mother, um, we, we knew what the rules were, and we knew what we were supposed to do, and we knew how we were supposed to do it, but we also, um, and if I would, I have not talked to my brothers this week, but if I were, I, I'm sure they would agree that there was a constant refrain, kind of a cheerleading kind of um, um, slogans and, and, and sayings that kind of kept us on track. Um, that we heard over and over again to kind of remind us of who we were and how we were supposed to act as a family, as people, as humans, and as Christians. And, and one of the things that I remember, or a couple of things I remember my mom saying over and over and over again that, that stuck for me, um, one was she would always tell us that we were children of the king. You are a child of the king. Um, from the youngest, I remember just growing up hearing that all the time, a child of the king. And I know I wasn't the child of the king of England or the, the king of a country or, or the king that sat on a throne in a, in a human sense. I knew what she meant. I was a child of, of King Jesus. And she would tell us all also this, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You're fearfully and wonderfully made. And as a child, I didn't know what fearfully meant. Um, I, I thought that was kind of scary. But, but now, but as I grew up, I, I understood that I was made by God, made in his image, made for a purpose. And, and the thing that mattered most to me, when my mom would always say, and again, I remember her saying to this to me over and over. Um, when you say, what am I supposed to do with my life? What's going on? Um, and she would say, you're here to glorify God and further his kingdom. Um, I found out later that was kind of a... a um, a different way of, of of using the Westminster Confession, the ancient one of those ancient Presbyterian kind of things, um, are the chief ends of man is to you know well I glorify God and further His kingdom. So so those kinds of sayings stuck with me as, as again as like cheerleading and encouragement and helping me to stay on course that, that I'm a child of the King. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and my goal is to glorify God. And further his kingdom. But what wonderful things to have imprinted upon my spirit by my mother. Passed down certainly from people that taught her that and shared that with her. And, and we need those kinds of imprints on our heart and our spirit. We need those kinds of sayings on, on us during times of crisis all the time. When we're separated from the community, when we're not with those we are expected, we, we've expected to be with, um, when we're not in church. My guess is you have found yourself falling back on, on your favorite passages of Scripture, on those things that you have been taught about what it means to be a person of faith during a time of separation. And in 1 Peter, we read about a church that was separated from its community. Not where they thought they belonged. They were dispersed. The word is they were a part of the diaspora. They were a part of the dispersion in Asia Minor. So they weren't where they thought they belonged. And Peter, in so many ways, is giving them the words and the encouragement they need to live lives of dignity in their separation. To live lives of dignity in their separation. And in 1 Peter, we heard this word that said, um, come to him that, that living stone. And like living stones be yourselves built into a spiritual house. And when I, when I hear that, come to, come to Jesus, the living stone, but be like living stones, um, knowing who they are, knowing who Peter is talking to, knowing where we are now, we are not stones gathered. We are not stones built into a pile. We're not stones 
crafted into a nice garden or even stones put into a place where we can park our car on a nice driveway. We are not together. We are separated, tossed, scattered. But we're still called to be like living stones. And like living stones, we are called to live lives of dignity. To not allow our faith to be shaken, but be reminded that God is still at work in our lives. In the lives we're living now, we can sit there and we can look around and take time as we are separated to recognize that though we would rather be together, we have this time to, to take in, in, in the silence and the separation from each other, the recognition that God is still at work. And God is using us and that our actions and how we live and what we say and what we do needs to be done with dignity. The reminder that Peter is offering those dispersed in the early church is that their lives. The reminder is the same for us, that your lives, that my life, that our lives the lives of those who live separated from the community of faith, dispersed, are still to be lived as a testimony. What you say, what you post, how you act, all of those things are a testimony to, to God as, and a reflection of who we are as a people of faith. These are important things for us to remember. In, in the early church, as described, and, and as we understand it, the, the church that Peter was writing to, they were, they were a church. And they did not have specific buildings called churches or even temples that they could go to. They, they, were, they, they, were, they were pushed aside, and they had to find their worship, um, one, with their families, those who they were closest to, and Perhaps they would gather together in each other's houses, but we know that but they didn't have a particular place to go. That they had to find, as the scripture reminds us, let me open this back up again, just so I can get the wording straight. It says, and like living stones, be yourselves built into a spiritual house. First Peter doesn't say, come to church. It doesn't say gather together as God's people because it was impractical. Perhaps it was not allowed. Perhaps they were afraid to do it because of the mocking and slandering of the people around them. But whatever reason, they couldn't do it together. So they lived with no particular and separate buildings for worship. And again, it's a leap to talk about us being compared to, to those who lived under the persecution of the early church. But Peter, again, doesn't spend a lot of time talking about the specific problems they had in the early church. He talks about the specific things that they were called to do and how they were to live under any kind of persecution or trial or separation, which makes it so nice for us that, yes, we can't compare ourselves and say, wow, it's as bad as it was in the first century for Christians, but we can find hope in the words that were offered to those who were living under a different kind of persecution and trial and separation than us. He says, he says to them, build a spiritual house. And for these weeks of the pandemic, of our separate our social distancing for all of this time I pray that we have been building for our, ourselves a spiritual house a place where we can worship and be God's people even though we are distant from one another that we can learn from the early church that we are a people who as Peter tells them a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, that you are these things. A royal priesthood. And you say, I'm a royal priesthood. Where's my, where's my church? You say, I'm, I'm an I'm a inheritor to the king. Where's my palace? 
And Peter responds by saying, you are these things that you can declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. Once you were no people, now you are God's people, wherever you are, wherever you go. We are inheritors of the king. We have an inheritance. We are children of the king. We were made in God's image. And we can, wherever we are, whatever we're doing, glorify God and further his kingdom. And one of the things that this whole situation, this whole um, 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 weird way of living, these interesting times, this new normal, or I like to call it the new abnormal, one of the things it may have taught us is that we can reclaim an essential part of what it means to be God's people. Because over 2,000 years, and probably over the past 200, 300 years, the, the church has, has become in many ways, and for good reasons and good purposes, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but we have become an extended family. And one of the things that we're having so much trouble with is that we don't get to be with the people we love on a constant basis. And that's an important part of what it means to be God's people, that we want to come back to church on a weekly basis to see those people that we love, to be in contact with them. We come back to this place, the house of God's people is really what this is. It's the house where God's people reside. And we, and we, and we focus that, we have focused so much on, on being an extended family and, and encouraging and holding accountable and living together in community. And again, a wonderful thing, but perhaps over this time, we have forgotten the other part of what it means to worship. To find those still quiet moments. Those places of those sacred spaces of life. And perhaps during these months of separation, we have been able to reclaim that. We've been able to reclaim some of the mystery and awe of our relationship with God and how we worship of recognizing that worship is not something that happens only in this room. Or a room down the hall called the Life Center. Worship is something that happens wherever we are. Wherever two or three are gathered in the spirit of God. So yes, we should uphold and, and claim the importance of being together as an extended family that the church is. But we also need to reclaim and recognize what we have been feeling and seeing over these last few weeks. That there, is, that there is time for silence and separation. And in that silence and separation, we may be better to fully experience the mystery and awe of what Jesus is calling us to be and who he's calling us to become. That we have been brought out of darkness into a great light. That we have received God's great mercy. And that we can declare the wonderful deeds who called him out of that, even when we're separated. Peter writes to the church of Asia Minor, Telling them just that. You can still be witnesses. And you can still be together in God's spirit. And as you do that, do not forget that you are inheritors of God's kingdom. You are a royal priesthood. And you don't need a church to do this in. And you don't need a palace to live in. All you need is the ability to live your life as God's people and be a living testimony to God, a living stone in God's kingdom. I pray that we will do just that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn is... Hymn number 117, O oh God, our help in ages past, let us sing.
Will you join me as we go to God in holy prayer? Lord, who is like both mother and father to all of us, your children, Lord, we are with you again today, calling out to you. Lord, today in its unique celebration of those who have loved us as a mother does, we give thanks. We are thankful for the many women in each of our lives who have stepped in and who have been our foundation, who have been people who have cheered for us, who have loved us, and who have modeled for us what it is for you to love your church. Lord, today we also lift up all those that this day brings strange and difficult emotions with. For those who long to be mothers, for those who have strained relationships with their own mothers, for those who have lost recently or several years prior their own mother. Lord, today we pray a special blessing of peace and comfort and assurance of your presence in each of those circumstances, each of those lives. Because, Lord, today on Mother's Day, we are again reminded so clearly that we are called as your people to care, to be with you, to have a special relationship, one that is just as strong, no, Lord, stronger than any relationship we have with any maternal caregiver. And so, Lord, today, in the midst of our celebrations, in the midst of our remembrances, in the midst of all that is happening in this world, Lord, we would ask that you would give us a moment of stillness, a moment of peace, a moment of quiet, to be able to be bold enough to sit in the stillness with you. For you are indeed our all. You are indeed quite more than enough. And Lord, as we revel in your presence, fill us again with what it is that you would have us to give out, that you would equip us to go for the journey as it would be ahead of us, doing your will, sharing your love, continuing to faithfully be your people. So, Lord, as your people, we join our voices together again this morning, praying the prayer you taught your disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And give us. Uh, they pass with stuff. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time in our worship that we receive an offering. And um, I remind you, again, first I thank you for the offerings that have continued to come in. And I thank you for your continued support of the mission and ministry of our church here in Little River and um, our support of, of the mission of the church, not just here, but down the street, around the corner, and around the world. Um, one of those um, down the street for a little ways, I'm taking um, I-20 into Columbia is the airport children's home um, on Millwood. Um, for, for as long as I can remember and before that, um, We've taken up a Mother's Day offering for Epworth Children's Home. Epworth is not on our portion line item. Um, I know that our missions committee does um, uh, uh, use some of their funds to give to Epworth, but um, we also do the offering. And if you did not come by and pick up one of these envelopes or one of these brochures that tells about the work of the Epworth Children's Home, you can still do that. Or when you make your offering, just designate that you want a part of that or a separate check to go to Epworth Children's Home. That would be much appreciated. And um, we will talk about this one more Sunday. We'll talk about this on Wednesday and then on Sunday again because 
um, not being in church, I think it's a, a, a reminder beforehand and afterwards it's really important. So please um, uh, make a generous offering towards Edward Children's Home. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this and every opportunity that we have to return our thanks unto you. We pray, Lord, that these are gifts, our tithes, and our offering will be acceptable in your sight. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.
and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.